Hi everyone, this is Cricket Song with Lunar Wisdom and this video is going to be answering the question, how do I start a coven? This video was brought to you by the generous donations from viewers like you. To learn more about how to support Cricket Song and to continue to view content such as this, please visit our Patreon page by clicking the link below. everyone, so I've had numerous people ask me this question, how do I start a coven? And I don't have any notes set aside for this, so this is all going to be just intuitive and my thoughts as I think them. So hopefully I don't ramble too much, hopefully I don't go off on tangents. The first thing I think that's really important to understand is why do you want to start a coven? You know, be honest with yourself. What is it that you're looking for to gain from starting a coven? And what do you imagine a coven is? You know, if, if I said to you, yes, I'm the high priestess of Lunar Wisdom Coven, what do you think that means? And I guess at this point, I want to talk about what a coven is. A coven is three or more individuals specifically witches who are practicing and working together to create a, a group mind so that their magical workings are, I guess, more powerful or have more energy or power behind it. It's a sense of community. It's a sense of family, but they're all, all the individuals, all the members of the coven are coming together with one specific goal in mind. It's a being a part of a whole. It's you still maintain your own individuality, but everything that you do while you're together in the coven and while you are out and about in your everyday life will affect that group, that coven. When you are part of this coven, when you are initiated into this coven, whether it's an actual formal initiation or whether it's just sort of a dedicating yourself to working within this coven, you know, binding yourself, your energy, your magic, your, you know, you to this group of people means that even when you're not in that presence, everything you do in your life will, because you have this etherical cord to them, will affect them. So keep that in mind. I feel that when you work as a coven, it's different than just, you know, joining a group occasionally for a sabbat or for a full moon ritual. This is, even if there is no physical or ritualistic initiation, there is a bond that you've created when you continuously work with the same group of people. You don't have to call yourself a coven. You could call yourself, I don't know, uh, whatever else, uh, 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 a circle you could even call yourself a circle but if you are constantly and continuously meeting with that same group of people and you are binding yourself or tying yourself to each of them you know creating and nurturing this relationship with them you create this group energy that that uh, connects you and will affect each of you. So if, if one of the members is going through something in their personal life, even though they may not discuss it with the circle slash coven, energetically, every member in that group will feel it and be affected by it, especially if you are a coven and you're working with the subtle energies and the not so subtle energies in your environment, within each of you, and as the collective, as that group, you will all be affected by that one person's breakup or relationship issues, okay? So understanding what your intention is in creating the coven, and then understanding what it means to be a part of a group, a circle, a coven, 
And if you truly want that for yourself, knowing why you want to be part of a coven, understanding what it means to be a part of a coven, and then understanding what it means to be the leader of this coven, whether you adopt the title of high priestess or high priest or whatever it is you adopt as a title, understanding what that means. If you start a coven and you start taking members into your coven, they're going to look to you for leadership. And what does that mean? What are the expectations that you have of the members that you have in your coven? And what are their expectations of you? Because as much as we, we sit here sometimes and want to say, I don't expect anything from anybody, when you start organizing a group of people, there are expectations there. So don't fool yourself. There are. And you as the leader or, or adopting the leadership role, because if you are the one who started or founded this coven, understanding and being very clear with what everybody's responsibilities are within this coven in order to make it work. Now, this doesn't mean you have to have titles, but obviously, you know, where is the coven going to meet? You know, what is it that the group, even if you do it in a sort of democratic way where you all have input, when you have a project in the mundane world, in, in a job, there is always like the team leader because there is this sense of, you know, someone, even if you're just the organizer, even if you are just the facilitator, there are responsibilities within a group dynamic. Because if you don't have a sort of leader, then things, honestly, you, you may have one person going this way, one person going this way, and nobody is meeting together, and, and you're all doing your own thing, and you're really not working together as a group. Do you know what I mean? So this book is really helpful. Um, it helped me in the beginning to establishing the coven. She talks, she, she definitely helps you figure out what your bylaws should be. If you're really going for, you know, the complete coven structure, having a set of bylaws, establishing coven offices, meaning, you know, just like in any organization, you have the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer. Those are, are the four positions or offices that you need in order to be an organization. So the president would be the high priestess, the vice president is the high priest, then you have your secretary and your treasurer. So the treasurer is the one who takes care of the funds or you know the money within the coven if you have any, and the secretary is the one who is going to um, to keep track of the Book of Shadows, uh, attendance, um, notes uh, when you have your council meetings. Um, but if you were really seriously looking to establish yourself as a nonprofit organization, those four positions need to be four separate people. You can't have overlapping. Um, she also, Amber K here goes through on how to get a tax exempt status if that's what you're looking to do for your coven. Uh, she goes through, you know, classes, how you're going to handle that, um, member agreements, if you're going to have people, you know, sign an agreement when they become a member of your group. Uh, she has uh, in her, I guess, in the appendix, she has a lot of different things for you to look at. This is a really good book for you to get. She covers the offices, she covers um, finances, she covers the tools that you might want for the coven to have. She talks about the coven stead, you know, where are you going to meet? How is that? If you're going to rent a place, you know, how are you going to, you know, who's going to be in charge of what? This is a really great resource. And if you are considering um, creating a coven or establishing a coven, then I would strongly urge you to either, you know, borrow this from the library if they have it or purchase this book because I can't tell you how many times I would go back to this book 
you know, if I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, how I wanted to handle certain things. And it definitely helped me establishing bylaws and um, submitting our status with the, uh, the, I, the, the, um, the internal revenue, the IRS. So there is a lot of structure in establishing a coven not an informal coven but an actual formal coven and if you are interested in creating this coven it's going to be important for you to understand why you want to do this so i would encourage you to create sort of like a mission statement and that's part of your bylaws you know this coven is being created to what what is your purpose in having this group because the coven is like any other organization, you know, like the Girl Scouts of America is an organization. You as the creator of this coven, I'm assuming then would take the position of president of this organization. My title was high priestess. My husband was my vice president. He was the high priest. And we always worked in as a team, as a partnership to establish new bylaws, or to come up with what you know our schedule for our weekly meetings the other important thing to consider even if you're not going to be a formal covenant you're not going to come up with bylaws is expectations between you the founder or the you know the president of this organization and the other members of it you know your other the other people the other witches that are going to be practicing with you within this coven what are they expecting from you what are you expecting from them and be honest and be clear because if you're not clear and you're not honest then that's where things are going to start turning to shit you know so having clear expectations on from the members and from you and and having clear communication understand that you can have a group practice or a coven practice even if you are not a formal coven Every time you, you practice, every time you tune into each other's energies, you're creating this sort of group sense or group mind, this energy, this entity that you are all linked by. Being a, a member of a coven is, I find, is very beneficial, can be very beneficial. It can really help you grow as a spiritual individual. It can really open you up to experiences and perceptions that you've never had. Being the high priest or high priestess or the leader of the coven takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of personal energy, takes a lot of time. And your coven is only going to be as good as the leader. The coven is going to be only as successful as the leader. So if you are only giving 10%, then the coven is only going to accomplish 10%. But also I've been in experiences where I felt that I gave 100% and I never really saw the accomplishments of that because the other individuals, the other members weren't as invested in it as I was. So from a personal, personal advice is to understand the priority. Where does the coven fit in other people's lives? If it's a number one priority for you, is it number one priority for the other members? because maybe it's not. And I feel like it would be most beneficial if you understood that from the get go. You know, top three priorities. What are your top three priorities in your life right now? The coven, my family, my job, in that order. Some people, it may be my job, my family, the coven. Some people, it may be my job, my boyfriend, my pets, and then the coven. But it's going to be important for you as the leader of the coven to understand how important this coven is to the people who are members of the coven and making sure that they're being honest with themselves too. Because it's easy to say that the coven is number one, but when push comes to shove and my child is sick, I'm not coming to the S-bot because I need to stay home with my kid then the coven really is not number one. And again, that's not good or bad. And for you as the founder of the coven or the leader for the coven, understanding for you where it is, 
If your child is sick, if your husband is ill, are you still gonna hold that coven meeting that you had scheduled? If you're not, then the coven really isn't number one for you either. But understanding with that group of people that you're with, having this understanding and open and honest in perfect love and perfect trust, if you're a Wiccan coven or not, maybe you're not a Wiccan coven. But understanding where this coven work is in your list of priorities is going to help you immensely. What I'm trying to say is that if you're looking to actually create a coven, once you figure out what it is that you, you are wanting and what you desire from working as a coven, that will help you figure out how structured you want to be. If you're just looking for community, if you're just looking for people to practice magic with, you don't have to organize and create a coven for that. Do you know what I'm saying? You can still get the sense of a relationship, the sense of a connection without having to have so much structure. But if you're looking for structure, then going through the work, there is a lot of organization and a lot of work involved. And sometimes if you're the one that is starting the coven and you're the one putting in all the energy and effort, sometimes at least for me, the, the, I guess the exchange isn't always equal. Sometimes for me, it felt like I was giving out more energy than I was receiving. Really consider why you want to do this. What's the purpose? What is your mission for doing this? Um, what type of coven would you be if you established a coven? Understanding, understand that once you get a group of people together, there's that dynamic between people. And sometimes things that are happening to people outside of the coven um, ends up taking over the time that you're together. And being the leader of this group, it's going to be important for you to be able to navigate through it. And, and let me tell you, sometimes that gets overwhelming. Sometimes it becomes very frustrating if you personally, as the coven leader, have a, a goal and all this other stuff ends up getting in the way and you don't end up achieving that goal because there's all this other side stuff going on. My, the coven that I was in, Lunar Wisdom Coven, at one time had only four members and we had gotten up to the point we, where we had eight members. Um, we never got over eight members and we lingered around six for most of our time together. Two of us being, you know, the high priestess and the high priest, which was myself and my husband, and then four other people. And even sometimes with only six, you still can have uh, different energies mixing in and situations um, overshadow the magical practice you know I'm not saying that happens in all covens but I can only imagine from personal experience it, some of the the chaos or the disorganization that happened with eight members I can only imagine what 13 members would be like I, I just I can't even imagine eight was i mean especially since we mean we met here in this house in this dining room my this table that the camera is sitting on can only comfortably sit eight people i remember at one point i mean we had eight people who were in who were either who were initiated members or already dedicants to considering taking in new dedicants where were we going to fit them it became to it came it was coming to a point where we didn't even know if we had physical room for more people so i don't know make sure you have your your expectations clear i feel like i'm repeating myself now so i'm going to end it here uh 
the the uh, coven craft witchcraft for three or more by amber k great resource if you're considering starting a coven get that take time to understand what it is you want from starting a coven making sure you're prepared making sure you have a understanding of yourself of what you expect the other members to be a part of what your expectations are on both sides and really have clear open communication Hopefully that answered your questions. If you have questions that I didn't address, um, please feel free to put them in the, you know, the comments to this video or uh, message me and maybe I'll make a second video. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media platform. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This way you won't miss any of my newly uploaded videos. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook through my Cricket Song fan page or my Lunar Wisdom business page. And you can always find me on my website at www.lunarwisdom.net